have statistical rules like you guys. So with the time I'm given, I'll try to put this presentation on a please and give you guys time right at the end of the presentation to ask questions and, and make some comments. So without any waste of time, allow me to introduce my project, my study. Okay, this is the content for today. I'm going to have introduction, objective, methodology, conclusions, and right at the end of the presentation, I'll ask you, uh, I'll, I'll want you guys to have some comments and questions based on what I'll be talking about. So, this is uh, my, my, my data is an Ethiopia demographic health survey for only Ethiopia, obviously, to be specific, which is in the Horn of Africa. African continent. Well, the objective of the EDHS is to collect effective data which is not biased so as to make informed decisions about the well-being of a country through the health stream of the country and their sample design is to do away with biased data so they try to be as random as possible. So their sample design is based on clustered data stratification within households and random choosing houses to be sampled. So their survey are questionnaire based. So with that being said, anthropometric data was collected using relevant tools to measure. This evaluation allows for the identification of subgroups of the child population that are increased of filtered growth, impaired mental development, and death. Just to ask a quick question here, raise your hand if you know your weight. Okay? Raise your hand if you know your height. Raise your hand if you know both. <laughs> wow. That means today I've got um, a well informed audience, which is good. Um, but most of the time, I, I, I come across people who only understand that. The most important thing is their weight to measure their health status, if I may put it in, in that way. But what is true is that also height is, is as important as weight, right? So there's something called body mass index, which is which which collaborates these two things, which is weight and height, right? I'm sure um, since I'm speaking to statistical gurus here. You're familiar with something known as body mass index, right? But today, my topic is, is not based on body mass index for adults, but it's based on body mass index for child under five, right? Hence, it's called body mass index for age, right? Now, there's a big difference between a body mass index of a child and uh, adults, right? If you talk of body mass index for adults, I mean, it's a simple formula as um, uh, weight over height squared. But if you talk of body mass index for children, you need to collaborate or make into consideration the age and the sex of a child, right? So hence, I mean, it is called body mass index for age. Okay. So in, uh, in the simple terms, my objective is to fit the social and demographic factors as my covariate in reference to my ordered BMI for age, which is my response variable, and do the same thing with different models just to look at the consistency of the result regardless of the different models while considering <coughs> that we're dealing with the complex survey design. So in 2016, EDHS collected data on the nutritional status of children by measuring the weight and height of all children under the age of five in only sample household. And a total of 10,752 children under five were eligible for height and weight measurement. Children height or then weight and age data were used to calculate three indices Height, height for age, weight for age, and weight for height. Each index provides different information about the growth and the body composition for assessing nutritional status. 
Now this is the response rate from uh, the data of EDHS. Okay, so what are these? These are my covariates. Um, as you can see here, yeah, you've got starting region, educational level of the mother, anemia level of the child, mother's body mass index, current age of the child, and months, wealth index, and the sex of the child. Now, question is, how, how did I come across uh, selecting these covariates? Well, that has to do with a lot of research I've done and a lot of reading I've done based on my study. So these covariates, um, then I, I decided to choose these covariates because in most research papers that I've read, um, these var variables were coming into play in contributing to the body mass index of a child, okay? Okay. Um, now, as, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, my topic is based on modeling polychotomous and ordinal outcomes, including their covariates. <coughs> so what, what EDHS uh, gave me was a body mass index which was of continuous data. Then from that continuous data, I then um, made a cutoff point since I wanted my data to be of order, my response variable to be of order, right? Meaning I categorized my BMI for children uh, by the first variable being my response variable, zero being normal, one being underweight, uh, two being overweight, then four being um, Obese. Okay. So, question is, what what are, what are these? So, weight wasting or weight for height. The weight for height index measures body mass index in relation to body height or length and describes the nutritional status. Right. Children whose Z scores is below minus two standard deviation from the median of of the reference population are considered as being thin, which is wasted. Then starting short for their age. Uh, then we've got height for age is a measure of linear growth retaliation. Right. As you can see here, the, the, the understanding is the same understanding as percentiles. Right. The same understanding as percentiles. So I use percentiles to create my cutoff for where the mass index for children under the age of five. Right. Um, well, another question may come through which is why did I use the start from 0 to 1, 2, and 3, okay? The software that I was using was Stata to analyze my data. So what Stata does is that it needs a variable 0 so as to have a var uh, something called a reference, right? So that's how I came about uh, coding these variables from 0 to 3. Okay, uh, this is um, my, my, my results. So from the children under five of Ethiopia, for normal underweight, overweight, and obese, the frequencies of the number of children who were repaired as being normal were 5,000, 5,048, and so forth, as you can see, and the percentage has been displayed here. Okay, okay. now the method that I've used is a method called of Z score test, which is, this is the method I've used to make the cutoff of my BMI, um, my, my, my BMI uh, cutoff for children. Now, question is, why did I use Z scores? Again, this has to do with a lot of reading that I've done throughout my research. Now, where did I find this? From the WHO. What is WHO? World Organization. Um, World Health Organization. Yes. Now, from the papers that I've, I've read through, now, they're the ones that indicate that for you to understand the nutritional status of children, you need to consider Z scores. What are the, the Z scores? This is a variable which is, is called an index where you can find the nutritional metric data for children under the age of five. Okay? Um, now, when fitting my models, I need to consider the fact that I'm dealing with the complex survey design type of data. 
So I've used the survey ordered logistic regression. Also used uh, the second model, which is referred as survey matrimonial logistic regression. Now let's go back to this one, survey ordered logistic regression. This take into account the order of the response variable, right? Now where this it, it takes a response as being the measurement of scale as being nominal. Right. So it doesn't take into account the order of the response variable, the second one uh, model. Okay. Obviously, before you use any model, you need to take into account the assumptions of the model because you can't just use the model without understanding the assumption of the model and why it's important to use it. So if you look at this, the assumption of the survey ordinal logistic regression is the effects of any explanatory variable are consistent and I mean it also takes into consideration the assumptions of parallel lines. Now if you look at the second model which is the survey multinomial logistic regression, it, it, its assumption is the model assumes that data are case specific. That is each independent variable has a single value for each case. Fun part. Results. Okay, so these are results for survey ordered logistic regression. Now, I mean, since I explained, if, if you're modeling this type of data, you need to take into consideration that you're dealing with the survey data, right? So you need to um, you, you state your number of structures, uh, the number of primary sample units, which is the number of structures is 25, the number of uh, uh, primary sample. Right? So as you see right on top, you've got ordinal BMI, odds ratio, mean standard error, the mean value, and the confidence interval. Okay? So now how do you interpret this? Okay? If a child under five is stunted, if a child under five is stunted, remember what this software takes into account is that it uses the from the categorical uh, uh, covariate it uses the category it uses the category that has the highest frequency and make it as a reference right so as you can see right next to stunted in brackets you've got no region these are covariates next to region you've got aromia education next to it you've got no education everything that is in brackets that is a reference right Okay. So how do you interpret this? If you say every child in Ethiopia that is under five and stunted, right? It's body mass. Uh, sorry. If you stunted, if you're under five and you stunted, your 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 odds ratio is ten point six eight, right? To fall into the category of being abnormal as compared to someone who's not stunted, okay? So, I mean, the interpretation is the same throughout these, uh, these uh, covariates. And if you take a look here, you put, what is this, age for child in months. And if you look here, it is not significant. Now, the question is, why did I include it on my results? Well, it, it, it's as simple as saying, um, I did include it uh, 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 in, my, in my results because it is known as a confounding uh, variable, right? Okay. So now you've got results for survey multinomial logistic regression, which is another model that I've used. Okay. Now how do you interpret this? Now you say a child under five in Ethiopia who whom it is stunted. The odds, the odds, the child under, under five in Ethiopia whom is stunted and underweight, the odds of their child to be, uh, the odds of their child to fall in a, in a category of being abnormal is 12.03 as compared to someone who's normal and not stunted. Remember, what are odds? Odds is the association of between two variables. Right. So what is abnormal? Maybe someone is asking him or her that what we, I'm talking about being abnormal. What is abnormal? Being abnormal is when you underweight or overweight or obese.
of this, right? I mean, this implies that the same interpretation that I've done for, uh, for stunting is, is the same uh, throughout these code values. Okay? Okay, um, I mean, this also goes the, the, for these variables. The interpretation is the same. Yes, go straight to my conclusion. Well, my conclusion is child mal malnutrition is associated with child bed size and maternal malnutrition. Stunting, underweight, and wasting prevalence is higher among children in the rural areas than those in the urban areas. Underweight decline will increase mother's education and increases house, household's wealth. The prevalence of anemia decreases with the child's age. Children in the rural areas are more likely to be anemic than those in the urban. The prevalence of anemia generally decreases with the increase with a mother's education and the household wealth. Well, right? Since anemia has a contribution towards a child's uh, body mass index. Again, it's a great pleasure to be uh, presenting in a SASA conference and given an opportunity by my supervisor and my sponsor to be here, which is SACA, and just to be around uh, the places not uh, KZN. Uh, thank you so much.